bound to the laws of the state, I pronounce you man and wife. You may now kiss your bride. Congratulations, my boy. Thanks. And you have a wonderful little wife. You'll have to excuse me for getting here so late. Had a little business in court, you know. Well, that's all right, Mr. Branshaw. Suppose you're off on your honeymoon. Not yet. We're going to have a wedding breakfast at my mother's house. Well, good luck to you both. And remember, if I can never be of service, just call on me. <laughs> but you specialize in divorce cases, and we won't need you. Will we, dear? <laughs> you bet we won't, honey. Oh, well, goodbye, Mr. Bradshaw. Goodbye. <laughs> Where you spend your honeymoon, Bob? Niagara Falls. That's bad. A friend of mine spent his honeymoon there, didn't sleep a wink. He said the falls kept him awake. <laughs> Well, in that case, maybe we'll go to Honolulu. <laughs> Honolulu, get that Honolulu. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's get organized. Right. Who's going with me? I'll go. You going with me, Richard? No, I'm taking my car. I'm take four of them. Well, come on, let's go. Let's go. Hello, Nelson. Hello, Brad. Well, there they go. Yeah. Won't be long now. Well, well, well. If it isn't my very good friend, Dr. Helen Jackson. I'm not your very good friend. You're only my lawyer. Now, please, doctor. You mustn't take it that way. Uh, Detective Nelson, Dr. Helen Jackson. I don't like detectives, especially fat ones. How do you do, Mr. Nelson? Mr. Bradshaw, I'd like to see you at my home right away. I want you to make out a will. A will? Yes, a will, my will. Don't you know how to make out a will? Why, yes, of course, but, uh, but who's to be your beneficiary? You haven't got any... That's none of your business. Good day, Mr. Nelson. Oh, how much are you going to charge me? Oh, I guess it'll be worth about... Never mind what it's worth. I'll give you five dollars, not a cent more. But wait a minute, Doctor. Can I give you a lift in my car? Oh, no. Never been in one of those fool contraptions yet. It certainly ain't gonna start now. Not at my age. Tell me that old lady's got enough money to burn up a wet mule. She's got money, all right. But where she keeps it, no one knows. Oh. Well, this is it. Oh, Bob, this is lovely. Aren't you glad it's all over? You bet I am. But didn't we fool the gang when we told them they were, we were going to Honolulu on our honeymoon? Mm -hmm. But this is going to be a better honeymoon than we could have any place else in the world. Isn't it? Yes, dear. In our own little home. And all alone. So this is Honolulu. Well, well, well. Say, we might run into Bob and Eleanor Lindsay here. That's right. They said they were coming to Honolulu on their honeymoon. Where are they? Well, doggone. Look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, what is this? Bob, my boy, this is the beginning of a party. When it'll end, nobody knows. What do you say? I think that would be lovely. 
Well, why not? Oh, boy. Let's go. Fist and boy. Folks, the party is on. Well, what are we waiting for? Yeah. Uh, bye, 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 bye. I guess it's all right. Well, I suppose you're waiting for your money. No, not exactly, but, uh... Well, well, go on, what is it? I, uh... I had to have a couple of witnesses. I think we should give them something for that trouble, don't you? No. What you think is none of my business. I promised to pay you five dollars. That's all you're going to get. Good day, Mr. Bradshaw. Good day, Doctor. nothing that's fun. And now, old pal, you'll soon find out that two can't live as cheap as one. So long, old pal, so long goodbye. The hour party makes us cry. But here's one thing you must know, that you can't run with us no more. So long, old pal, so long goodbye. Perhaps we'll meet again on high. We thought that you would always be a champion of liberty. So long, old pal, so long to spy. We'll meet again before we die. You absolutely nothing to find. And Mr. Barley Bear is the most famous ride. So long, old pal, so long to spy. We haven't even asked you the reason why. You surely didn't go back on old George who fought so hard at Valley Forge. So long, old pal, so long to spy. The hour of pardon really makes us cry. Give our regards to your wife and say goodbye to paradise. So long, pal. We surely hate to leave you so long, pal. It's your Johnny Beaver. So long, pal. We gotta get out. So long, old pal. Goodbye. <laughs> How about playing uh, that chirp song for the bride and groom? Chirp song? Which one? Uh, yeah, something about uh, you drive gloom away or something. Oh, you mean you drove the gloom away. Oh, yeah, Bob. That's a good song to sing yeah, along there. Drove the gloom away. Swing it, boys. When the sky is cloudy and gray, and it rains a hard all day, you did something sweet to me. You drove, drove, drove the gloom away. When the snow is on the ground, and the tree leaves couldn't be found, you did something sweet to me. You drove, 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 drove you away. Bees swam around you. Da-da, they think you're fine. Oh, 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 I'm so wild about you, baby. And to top it off your mind, when the snow was on the ground, and the tree leaves couldn't be found, you did something sweet to me. When the sky is cloudy and gray, and it rains so hard all day, you do something sweet to me. Oh, baby, don't the gloom away. When the snow's on the ground, and the tree leaves couldn't be found, you do something sweet to me. Oh, baby, don't the gloom away. Bees swarm around you. They think you're fine. 
getting kind of late, Bob. Thank you, better go. Eleanor, we want to apologize for breaking in and taking charge of your new home and everything. We want to surprise you. Oh, don't apologize. We really don't know how to thank you. Why, we've had a wonderful time. Haven't we, Bob? You bet we have. <laughs> and listen, I want to And bring the boys over real soon, will you? Sure, anytime, Eleanor, anytime. And Fred, when you and Martha get married. What is it, Bob? It looks like a fire. I think it's the foundry. The foundry? That's what it looks like from here. And if it is, I won't have a job to go to in the morning. Well, why don't you go and see if it really is the foundry? Yes, come on, we'll drive over my car. Oh, but this is our wedding yes, night. but this fire's probably burning you out of a job. Come on, let's go. Go on, Bob. They're waiting. It's okay, honey. Run along and get a rest. Oh, but I'm not going. And why not? Oh, I don't like fires. And besides, I'm a little tired. You run along. I'll wait. Nothing doing. I'm not going to leave you in this house all alone. Robert James Lindsay, are you going to quarrel with me on our wedding night? Now, you run along and see what's happening to your job. Oh, but honey, I don't want to. I'll be right here when you come back, stay sound and waiting. Waiting? May I come in? Oh, you style me. I'd like to talk with you for a moment. If, well, that is, if you don't mind. Certainly, Doctor. Come in. Thank you. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Thank you. I... I just come over to thank you for inviting me to your wedding. Oh, thank you for coming. Yeah, but what I want to know is, just why did you invite me? Really, I don't know what to say, except we were trying to select the best people in town. And you feel that I am as important as Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Bradshaw and people like that? Why, Doctor, I think you're much more important. And you really wanted to invite me in spite of all the evil things they say about me? I most certainly did. You see, I know a lot about the good deeds you've done. And I don't think there's any truth in the things people say about you. I also know it was you who paid the mortgage on the colored children's home. Who told you that? My foster parents. They told me many things about you. They knew you even before you went to Africa on a missionary, didn't they? Did you know my real parents? I knew them both very well. Your mother and I were schoolmates. I introduced her to your father. They fell in love with each other, and they were married. I've often wondered what they were like. But all I know about them is what I've been told. They're both dead, child. They were killed in a tornado when, when you were 10 months old. It was only a miracle that you escaped. Your parents were good people, both of them. I last saw them on the day they were married. After that, I went to Africa. Your mother looked just as you do now. I might have been your mother. She was younger than I was. Youth must be served always. You loved my father, too. 
I loved him too. Was it the foundry? Yes. And you know what that means. It means you can go on your honeymoon right away. Well, I'd better be going and leave you two alone. I almost forgot what I came for. I brought you a little present. Here. Your father gave me that before he married your mother. It's yours now. Take it. You're the only person in the world I'd give that to. I hope you'll like what's inside. Well, good night. Good night, Doctor. Good night. And pleasant dreams. Well, Zeno, I see you haven't learned that breaking in houses and climbing through windows is bad business. Yeah. And I see you ain't learned that hiding gold from the government is also bad business. Just what do you mean by that? Do you know what I mean? You've got $20,000 in gold hidden somewhere in this old house. Gold you brought back from Africa. Gold you didn't turn into the government. And I want half of it. Are you asking me to divide my life's earnings with you merely because you're my no good brother? Is that it? You catch on quick, don't you? I'm not asking. I'm taking. See? The last thing you took was ten years in the penitentiary. Yeah. Ten seems to be my lucky number, don't it? Sure it is. That's why I'm only taking half your gold. Savvy? <laughs> you know, you're very, very amusing. Now listen, sister. Don't try any of your funny business, or someone's liable to get hurt. Why? I'm surprised at a brave man like you being afraid of a little thing like this. Never mind the flowers. What is that thing, anyway? It's just a little souvenir that I picked up in Singapore. A Chinese gong striker. Hey. I'll show you how it's used. <laughs> didn't hurt you? No. And it won't do you any good. Because if you try any of your black magic on me, I might forget that you're my sister. 
I'm afraid I don't quite understand you, Zeno. Don't look now, but there's a great big man right behind you. <laughs> Listen, Helen, that gag's as old as the hills. Why, they've even set it to music. Is that so? Well, that's just fine. Because Ingina likes music, don't you, Ingina? <laughs> By the way, Zeno, did I understand you to say that you were taking some gold or something? I know. All I want to do is get out of here. <laughs> Gina. Uh, uh. Bring smock. Just saying, she's kept us all these years, and now she's given it to me. I guess she loved your father very dearly. But she must have been a lot older than he was. I think older men, not too old, always make the best husband. Oh, you're just saying that because I'm older than you are. No, I'm not, dear. I'm saying it because it's true. Yeah, I guess you're right. What do you say we turn in? What is it, dear? I don't know. There's nothing on it, but there's something inside. Well, where did it come from? I bet it belongs to that old doctor. But it wasn't there when she left. You sure of that? I'm positive. I wonder what's inside. I don't know, but I'll find out. My secret is a message from the grave. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Why, that's in the Bible. Yeah. And look, this sketch is just like that locket she gave you. That's right. What's the matter? What? Bad, bad. Now look what you've done. I told you not to play with that knife. So you cut your finger. Wait a minute, I'll fix it for you. Bad boy. Hold still now, it won't hurt you. There now. <laughs> no, 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 that didn't hurt. Stop. Now, wait a minute till I tie it up. Hold still now. Stop it. Stop it. You leave this on. You do that again. Stop. Now, go ahead. Go on now. Don't do it again.
Discovery in medicine since Louis Pasteur. Gina, this is it. If it does what I think it will, I've done more for humanity than anyone else on earth. I don't know why I should worry about humanity. Humanity has never done anything for me. You either, my poor dumb friend. I've given the best years of my life to helping others. Well, there must be some reward for those who give. I'll probably get mine in heaven, if I ever get there. You too, Angina. Mm. Stop, mm. stop, mm. stop. Mm. She's not home, Bob. Oh, there must be somebody home. The lights are... Don't go in there. Come on. Dr. Jackson. Dr. Jackson. Honey, we shouldn't have come. It's late. There's something funny about this business. I'm going to find out what it is. I wonder what happened. I don't know. Stop. 
Now, you stay here. But what is this? Never mind. Wait a minute. Well, give me the police. The homicide detail, please. Oh, we've been through all that. Yeah, we're going through it some more, too. Take a look at this, Nelson. Maybe it's enlightening. Ah, oh, so you're a total stranger around here, huh? I give, devise, bequeath to Eleanor Ruth Lindsay all my property, both real and... It is provided, however, that the said real property must never be sold, given away, or otherwise relinquished, and that the said Eleanor Ruth Lindsay shall occupy and live in the house at 1313 Wellman Road as her home as long as she should live. And so you didn't know the old doctor, huh? Yet she made her will in favor of your wife, and it's dated this very day. Honestly, Mr. Nelson, I don't know what you're talking about. And he didn't do it either. Boy, you're going to have a lot of explaining to do before you go on your honeymoon. All right, boys. Take him away. <laughs> Now, honey, what's the trouble? Bob Lindsay, if you don't stay out of this icebox, I'm going to tear you to pieces. Have you got a paper? Well, honey, what are you talking about? Last week you ate all the roast stuff that was left, bones and all. So gloomy here. Bob hasn't been dead since the family burned, and that too has made it very hot. And the finance company. It's threatened to take our new car. Yes, that's what I thought. Uh, where is Bob? I was hoping to find him here. He'll be here in just a moment. He just went to the market just around the corner. Well, that's fine. I want to talk to you two about giving up this old place and moving into better quarters. Yes, but what about the will? Don't worry about that. I'm the executor, you know, and I can take care of that very easily. In fact, I've already made a deal for this place. And all we need is your signature. I would have to talk that over with Bob. Oh, excuse me, please. I have something in on the stove cooking. You just sit right down and make yourself at home. Bob will be back in a dizzy.
you are, madam. Thanks. Did you see Attorney Bradshaw? No, where is he? He's right in the sitting room. Well, that's funny. I didn't see him. Well, I'll go right in and apologize. And ask him to stay for lunch. Yes, sir. Thirteen, thirteen, Wellman Road. Same house, Chief. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. It had been made out, but hadn't been signed. Oh, they're both here. I got them right here looking at me. They couldn't get away if they wanted to. Yes, sir. We searched this old house from attic to basement. Uh, uh, that is, uh, only there ain't no basement. Well, uh, his neck was broken and two ribs caved in and his back twisted. I was thinking that maybe he committed suicide until I found out that both arms were busted and then I couldn't figure it out. Sir? No, sir. I think you no, sir, Chief. Back in uniform. That's what I think. Uh, no, sir, I don't want to go back in uniform. Are well, you blockhead? Don't you know yes, that sir? man can't kill himself and then break both of Yes, sir. Arms? Well, you'd better find out who's doing that killing. Yes, sir. Thanks, Chief. I was going to leave Jones here with you folks, but the uh, chief thinks this case needs a real detective on it, so I'm going to stick around. You can go now, Jones. I'm sorry uh, we haven't got an extra room to put you up in, Mr. Nelson, but uh, we can spread a blanket on the sofa and you can stay there. Oh, don't worry about that, my boy. The law never sleeps. You folks better run along and get some rest. I'm going to take it easy for a while and do a little thinking. Good night. Good night, Mr. Good night, Nelson. Mr.
going on here? Who's keeping all that noise? It's a burglar. What burglar? Where? When? He went out of that door. What hit me anyway? I did. I thought I was hitting the burglar. Oh. Hey, what's the idea? There ain't no burglar out there. Oh, my head. Yeah, wait a minute. Let me help you. All right. Right over here. Huh? All right, now, you'll be all right in a minute. But the burglar, he got away. Oh, you just take it easy. Don't you worry about no burglar. If there's any burglars around here, I'll find them. The door turneth upon its hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. Proverbs 26, 14.
you don't mm. like the taste of lead, mm. Mr. Jungle Man, mm. do you? Mm. Well, you better get used to it. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to feed you up plenty of it. old bird, ain't you? Well, I'm gonna send you where it's nice and warm. Warmer than it was in Africa, where you came from. What's the matter? I thought I heard some shots. I don't hear anything. It must have been a car backfiring. Oh, my head. Come on, honey. Let's get some sleep.
I tell you, Chief, there's another one. Yeah. A dead man. Yeah. No, 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 not me. This is me talking to you. Well, you better send the whole force, and you better get here fast if you want me to wait for you. Nelson. Nelson, my wife's gone. She's just appeared. I've looked all over the place for her. Well, don't just stand there, man. Do something. Say something. She's disappeared. Boy, she's lucky. Listen, you hear that? That's Eleanor's voice. You hear it? Hey, look. There now, honey. You're all right. All our troubles are going up in smoke. Oh, but Bob, everything we've got is gone. Our furniture, our clothes. Don't worry, dear. I'm almost glad it's over with. Anything's better than living that horrible house. What happened? Mister, if you can tell me anything that didn't happen, I'll put in with you. Where's Nelson? He's in there, I'm afraid. Poor Nelson. One of my best men. A brave officer and a brilliant detective.
Thanks, Chief. How did you get out? Never mind how. If you'd have seen what I saw when I come to, man, oh, man. And I was going to rest that thing. I'd have been here a lot sooner. But these things are heavy. What are those? Well, they are... Never what... mind. Where'd you get them? Well, I was... Shut up! Who does it belong to? Well, here's your new furniture, honey. And a lot of new clothes. And here's our new home. Nelson, you get back to hand out your report. 